All right, y'all. We're going to Joe's Retro World. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of accessories that came out in 1998 for the Game Boy DMG and the other lines of Game Boys, all the way up to Game Boy Advance SP. And that is the camera that came out with a Game Boy camera. It just slipped right into the original uh, slot like every other Game Boy DMG game. And it will start working. It was very beautiful. You just put it in the original way, just like this. You turn it on. And the camera rotated back like this. So you can actually take selfies. And this was the way you would take a selfie back in the day. This was the first way. That's crazy. So you go to shoot. Shoot. And boom. You're looking at yourself. Hey, what's up, y'all? Or you can turn it around, like I said. You can turn it sideways. So you're looking sideways, camera. Or you turn it all the way around. And then, boom. You're panning out. And, of course, it wasn't the very best quality. It was a Game Boy DMG in 1998. But this was a very fun novelty. Now, you can do the brightness. You know, contrast. I mean, it was cool because while everybody else had these Polaroids or other cameras, you would get to walk around with your digital little camera, you know, and just show it off. And then in the same year they came out of, with the camera, they came out with, well, a big Game Boy printer. Yeah. And this was cool to get with it, man. This was really cool. It took six AA batteries, y'all. Oh, my God. It was nine volts that was needed. And so they did provide a... Uh, where is it at? No, this one doesn't have it. Yeah, I thought it had a AV cable, you know, direct plug. No, it's just a six batteries. So, yeah, you're constantly buying batteries for your kids back in the day. Now, this one came with a little bit of corrosion on these, you know, connectors right here. So all I did was just take it apart. It was these five little screws right here. Boom. Took them out. They are those security bit screws. See how they are the tri-ring? So you have to get one of the little kids. You can get those kids from anywhere that has those tips on there. And just remove those, and it just comes right apart. I'll, I'll be taking this apart later so y'all can see what it looks on the inside. But first, we're going to go ahead and give a little information, show it, show it off, and then we'll get inside and... You can see how, how cool it looks because it's just a simple little thermal printer. That's all it is, just like printing out receipts. But, you know, it's programmed so that it can print out your image of, of, from your device that you used. But, yeah, it's really cool. Now, when you do a test feed, you can actually hold down the feed button and then turn it on and it'll print out hello. So we'll, we'll be checking that out later on. But, yeah, it was really nice as right here the port for the link cable. Go back here and push this little tab. That way you can remove the the top cover. Just like that. You put the paper. And it tells you, you know, please don't pull the paper back, ruining the gears. You know, don't damage the gears. So, yeah, a lot of kids, of course, did that. They get mad. You know, the little brothers and sisters or whoever. And just yank it out. Well, you can't play with it. So, so yeah, unfortunately, you can't find these pretty much everywhere I, I went and looked on ebay and there's a whole bunch of listings on there and also on macari and they're they're range different prices i've seen some of them 30 all the way up to 60 70 bucks of course but i got this one luckily for 40 dollars. you know shipped and everything that was total cost after taxes and yeah all i had to do was actually clean up the connectors and get it going and then i went on the inside and dusted it off and stuff but yeah, more or less, uh, I got a brand new Game Boy printer. Now, when I got that, I said, well, I'm going to need paper to go with it. So I got on eBay and boom, I found new, new Game Boy paper. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's brand new and unopened. And they had uh, like 25 of these, but I only got one because I'm just going to use one row. I'm never going to use it continuously, you know, every so often I'll take it and show it off with somebody and let them print out a picture for themselves. But yeah, this is so cool, y'all. It's brand new. 
paper. And we're going to go ahead and open it up right now for the camera. So let's, let's open it up very gently. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to ruin the box. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, no. Don't damage it. Okay. Try to do that nice as, as I possibly can do it. Cool. Oh, it has a little direction on there. Now, these did come out in blue. They did a Pokemon uh, limited edition, yellow in Japan. Um, they came out with red, blue, white, and I believe another color. Yeah, just that yellow. Look at that, y'all. It's cool. Got three little, three little ones in there. I paid $24 for this, y'all. <laughs> but, hey, it's worth it. It's worth it. I mean, I got... I got good memories to go with it, so. Oh, they're discolored. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got the different colors. That must be red, blue, and yellow. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. I did not realize that, y'all. Look at that. Yeah, it is the... Red tint, yellow tint, and the blue tint paper. That is too cool. And I was just telling you about how it came out in those three colors. Cool now. All right. I didn't even realize that. All right, let's check it out. So let's try one of my favorite colors, which is red. Put these other two up back here. And we're going to load this into it. Now, before we do that, I want to show you, you have to have a little link cable right here in order so you can hook up your DMG or your Game Boy Advance or SP or Game Boy Color up to it. And you have to get this little adapter right here in order for it to work with the Game Boy DMG because remember, this came out in 98 toward the end of the life of the DMG. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to show y'all. It says Game Boy on it. Pretty cool. And so the cable will link up there because you get your Game Boy DMG. And you put the cable adapter right here. It has a little hook to hold it. It's nice. And then you just insert the other in. Uh oh, so sorry. sorry. And then this other end plugs up to your Game Boy printer, which is right here. Now, it's crazy. While I was researching all this Game Boy printer to make this video, I looked down and saw my Game Boy, Super Game Boy 2. Now, I know you can use the camera in it. And then I looked on the sign and I said, is that the same cable, the same link cable? Because I know they added the feature that you can actually transfer your Pokemon characters to somebody's Super Game Boy using the link cable. I said, no, no. come on now. Am I going to be able to use my Game Boy color uh, camera and printer off of the Super Game Boy 2? And I went and I just tested it before this video, y'all. And yeah, you can, just like that. So there are some Game Boy games that actually allow you to print out images from the gameplay and it's a whole list it's crazy there's a whole list of games right here let me see where's it at yeah alice in wonderland asteroids austin powers oh behave austin powers welcome to my underground disney dinosaur yeah it's like a list of games that all are compatible with the Game Boy printer. And so you can put them in your Game Boy and then you're able to print out stuff. Yeah, of course, the Pokemon. So you can print out your Pokemon that you captured and stuff. But yeah, I thought that was just too cool, y'all. It, it works for all of these different systems flawlessly. Just got to look it up. But yeah, over here, I have a 
Game Boy Advance SP. Got its own little port back here. And because it's backwards compatible with the Game Boy camera, it can also run and do the printer the exact same way. It's really cool. You know, you just... And boom, you're, you're, you're printing. So let's do this printer real quick and load this paper. Yeah, of course, that's the way it looks. You know, you go to your shoot. And because it's on the bottom, it kind of sucks. It's upside down. So technically, you have to hold it like this and look at the screen and be like, oh, man, I'm going to have to take an upside down picture. Yeah, yeah. It, sorry. So, yeah, it, that's the way that works. So not everybody like that. But, hey, you know, it's all good. You know what you're doing. Just take the picture like this upside down. <laughs> oh, that's just... Yeah, they're just stupid. But yeah, it works. It sucks the way it works, but it works, okay? And that's the whole point. It wasn't designed really for that. It was really designed for the old Game Boy. And so yeah, let's go ahead and plug this up. Take this link cable. Plug it up. I'll leave it there. Now over here, let's go ahead and load some paper up. That's too cool, y'all. Yeah, we're gonna remove that because we're gonna be feeding it. And you just feed it in like this to the bottom. There's a small little slit where it's gonna go into. Okay. Put that there. Alright, so let's turn it on. See if it'll start feeding. Alright, let's see. I got it wrong. Yeah, that would get annoying. Let me try to load this paper. Hold on. I'm struggling with it. So I went ahead and fed that the white paper because it gave me white, blue, and yellow. I don't know if you can see it too good. This is the blue paper. But unfortunately, y'all, this is such an old new stock. This is why you must take caution when doing it. You're supposed to hold down the feed button while turning the system off and on, and it prints out hello. And you can barely make it out. So let me do it again. And maybe this time it'll do better. So we're going to hold the feed button down, turn it back on. You got to go. And it'll print it out hello again. There it is. Let's see if I can zoom in and focus better. There you go very faint y'all very faint and that sucks because the reason it's doing that is because it's new old stock paper from 98 at the end of 2000 that's 20 year old thermal paper and of course it's not gonna work properly but it's gonna work so what we're gonna do is put this cover back on snap it back on and yeah at least See what we can print out. It sucks. Now, I had to rip off the beginning triangle because it just wouldn't feed. It's designed to have two little rubber feet that are moving right here that are actually gripping the paper. Okay. So, let's turn our DMG back on. 
Oh, it died on me. Oh, no. <laughs> My DMG has never died on me. That is crazy. I've, I've had that battery going for... Oh, that's why. Yeah, I finally just needed to die. Just look it up down here, and we'll do it with the Game Boy DMG. Go to view. And there's me. Oh, glorious me. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and hit print after I push. I had to push up on the D-pad. Okay. So from here, the image, you push A. And then you push up on the D-pad to print. And then A again. And now it's going to give you the option to print or cancel. You hit A to print. It's going to start sending the information over to the printer. What happened? Paper got stuck. Uh oh. Technical errors, y'all. Technical issues. Let's open this back up. What happened? It's free flowing. Is it just too? So what was holding it? I don't know, y'all. It's an old thing. It can't always work 100%, but. So we're going to try this again. Send this signal, baby. Take two. Yeah, this thermal paper is just dead. Oh, and it didn't even do the whole image. Did half of the image? Oh, that really sucks, y'all. I'm going to have to get some modern uh, thermal paper and then just cut it to size and feed it around these rows. And this is $25 down the drain. I guess I paid for paper in a box that don't work no more that really sucks y'all and that's what's part of the that's what's part of the experience of buying retro stuff is that hey this stuff is old it might not work <laughs> i mean if it's new <laughs> all right so let me go ahead and get a screwdriver we can open this up and i can show you what the inside of this printer looks like so when taking this apart you want to go ahead and remove the batteries and then there's one tri wing screw right here okay so you remove that with a tri ring screwdriver head uh oh there it goes this one only has three blades not four like a regular phillips it only has three and that's to remove these Let's see. You can get it to focus. Focus, baby. There you go. Oh, it's trying. There you go. So see how that's a three point? So yeah, you just use a little special screwdriver set. And uh, take them out. There's six of them. They're very small, so be careful. Okay. Take out your paper. Don't pull it back. Cut it. You know, just tear it and then pull it out going forward with the feed button and once you do that then you'll be able to open it up and expose the inside now when i went ahead and cleaned this i squeezed these little tabs in you can just squeeze them in okay just like this push it down at the same time and this allowed me to take the power button and the feed button out and clean it underneath real good with a little soap and water to brush i didn't get none of this wet i didn't want none of this wet so this was the only part that i put just a little soapy water just to get it out alcohol really doesn't always do it so that got it nice and clean and then over here 
you got your board okay and it's held in place with one little black screw right here one little bronze silver gold screw down here okay and these are phillip heads they're very small phillip heads so be very careful not to strip them okay got a few little capacitors it has a little chip underneath that it has the memory you know programming all that good stuff of course there's your feed button right here your power button now if i was to put the batteries back in i can show you exactly uh how it operates before i take it completely apart but yeah let's do that with the batteries put in you can now see where i turn it on little led lights up and that's that thermal band that's the little plate that heats up so the paper feeds in right down here right there okay feeds in right through there and then it's pulled through and it's fed very thin through this little band right here this is where it holds it and then this little thermal head goes back and forth and then of course if you push feed i don't know if you can see it moves that head across going like that but also let me see here let's turn some light on for you there you go right there those little gears are turning another rubber feet oh there you go you can see it there see it rotate it has these little rubber feet on the left and the right side of it yeah that's the one that's feeding the paper through nice and slow every time it turns one click that's what's feeding the paper it's really cool so let me go ahead and remove these screws and show you what it looks like underneath when removing this little black screw on this side be careful because that's the screw that actually holds this printer down it has another screw another brass gold looking screw down here Phillips said that you can use to remove it and then that way the whole little machine part will come off you can dust it underneath dust it on the top i suggest just use a little air duster and then you can put some white lithium grease on this little rotating blade right here this one that's what i need to do put some little lithium on it but nowhere else oh well besides the side gears too you can put a little white lithium grease there that's safe but that would be nice if you look underneath Here's it, uh, the chips that are controlling it, giving it its good memory and everything. So on the top, you got a Sharp Japan LH5164A9- What is that? Uh, 10L or OL? Yeah. So those are the chips on there. Got some resistors, capacitors, of course. Make sure everything works right. And they went ahead and soldered the these uh battery connectors directly to it like this so when you're removing it you got to be careful because it sits you know like that and then down here sorry about the background noise yeah dallas for you baby and yeah i just went ahead and separated like just like this clean it up with some good alcohol I didn't clean none of this with alcohol here. None of this. The only thing I cleaned with alcohol was these battery terminals right here. And then I put a little vinegar on them afterwards, apple cider vinegar, just to make sure that the rust never comes back or the corrosion. But yeah. It just goes right back. And I'm going to put the screws back. And that'll be it. So that'll allow you to know how to go in here and dust this if, if you need to. Maybe you got some paper jammed in there for some reason or whatever but yeah y'all i hope this video helps you and go out there and get your game boy printer and for nostalgic reason yes it's awesome that i got this but it does suck that i got screwed over because it doesn't work because it's so old i didn't take that into factor so so yeah oh well <laughs> until next time y'all peace and much love from joe's retro world